So I've started covering the trellis in lights, and this trellis, it turns out, I thought it was stained wood, but it's, it turns out to be a sort of foam plastic, which should make it uh, fairly resilient. Um, I've mounted the junction box onto that plastic. I was wanting to mount it right at the side here, but uh, when this has been screwed on, uh, it's been screwed on with a bit of ex excess force and it's broken that, so uh, I moved it along one. It doesn't really matter. Where I've run the lights in already, I left a bit of slack at the bottom here to allow for some space for this to be pulled out if needs be to give access to the junction box uh, in here. Uh, I've run the cable in. The cable choice, I'd rather have used black and rubber cable because it's better rated for outdoor use, but in the Isle of Man you use what you can get. Uh, so a bit of strain relief there in case that gets pulled. The blue LEDs is the first layer, so I've brought it out of the box I've taken them right into the box, uh, I brought it out and then I surrounded, I put it right round the whole outside of the thing uh, and then started zigzag it up and down and just because it worked out quite conveniently I've basically taken uh, up the, the, the lights uh, up in the middle of each of these squares and then on the sort of vertical support and that meant that then there was a modest amount left so I just zigzagged it across uh, just to fill, fill it up and get rid of it basically it was the easiest way to do it so that's going to help me get the fill now. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, put the out, outer uh, outline of the orange round here, which is just going to basically, it's going to go onto the outside here. And the tube light, uh, it, it comes, it's cuttable in the UK in one metre sections, so it's just going to have to be the nearest uh, overlap of the metre, and I will just overlap that because uh, some people black it out, but uh, when you black it out it kind of, well, it seems a waste of the LED output um, and it also means if you've got a double sided uh, effect it blacks that area out. Oh, and I've got a, a kitty helper has just arrived. Yes, you, you little minx. Um, so yes, I'm about to do that now and quite fortuitously it's a warm day today which uh, is good because uh, in, when it's, uh, I'm going to turn this round try and do a little bit to camera here, this may not work. Uh, it may may not work, I'm not 100% sure, but um, now uh, because it's sunny it's going to be quite warm and that's good because the tube light is best put on when it's warm because if it's uh, too cold uh, the plastic can be quite rigid and uh, it can be hard to work with and also damage the tube light. So um, yeah, I'm going to warm it up first uh, anyway uh, and then I'll bring it out and put it on. So that's the board drawn now, and rather fortuitously it came to almost exactly 5 metres. It uh, really is quite close. So rather than have try to lose a metre, I've just uh, I've compromised. I've uh, just left a tiny little gap here, and uh, I've cut the tube light at that point and put a glued a cap on. I'm not going to fix this right up until, uh, onto that yet until the glue is completely sealed. It's a sort of plastic solvent glue that's used to make these waterproof. I'm also going to leave these cables uh, full length. I'm not going to crop them down because I like the idea of uh, it being versatile. You know, what I want next year might be different than what I have this year. This kitty is just so intrigued. This kitty wants super petting. This kitty wants petted. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, add the stars on. The stars are just going to be just basically just spread where they look best. And it's quite nice that because this is a trellis with the sort of uh, sections here, I can just basically cable tie the, the stars on everywhere. It makes it very versatile as a sort of Christmas lighting support, really. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a good result so far. That's looking pretty good. So uh, now we just need to fill that with the stars and that'll be complete. But right now, I'm going for a coffee. And the job is done. The stars have been mounted uh, securely onto the frame. It's all been hooked up and I think that's looking pretty good, although I will say the blue is just a wee bit too bright, but you know what? I can change that. I can modify that because uh, I, because I built the little custom power supply for the blue LEDs, I can lower the intensity and that can be as simple as just a little inline connector. So that's a pretty good result. That looks quite nice. Uh, things worthy of note. Uh, I just secured these uh, stars on by just tie wrapping them at a, a few points in the frame. And this one, I did it one, two, uh, three, Four, four points, so roughly four points per star. These tails coming off the stars are a kind of nice accident. It's a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say, because the aluminum frames I used were standard frames with tungsten uh, tube light on them, just commercial frames, you know, stuff sold to, to people to put in their own gardens and homes. And I stripped the tungsten tube light off, but the 
I, when I put two meters of the LED stuff on, it just it didn't quite work in, so I ended up the big tail coming off. But all I've, I've done is take that down to the next star just to create a sort of like a, a string of stars effect, and it looks quite nice. The blue is just, it makes such a huge difference. If you can imagine that without the blue, it would be fairly, it would still be good, but it would be empty ish looking. So the blue just uh, adds that nice scatter in the background. Warm white would have been another option, but either way, I think I'd go for a sort of low intensity. Other things worthy of note, in all instances I've kept all the cable as long as possible and just tucked it out of the way. Uh, likewise, uh, I threaded it all down the back just to keep it out of sight, but I've kept it all the full length because it means that uh, next year, if I want, I can, well, use that tube light on different effects or I can uh, use them in a different configuration. Every year it could be different. Things I might do differently. I put the... Uh, the orange border around the outside, and it's nice. It puts it casts a nice glow around the outside of the effect. But I'd also consider putting that on the inside. Although now looking at it in the dark, the distinct, you know, transition from the orange glow on the outside to the blue on the inside looks pretty good. Uh, I'll show you a picture of the junction box inside because uh, I took a picture of it when it was open. It's ugly, as most junction boxes are, but functional. Uh, I'll also show you a picture of a junction box in a real Christmas light, uh, a real municipal Christmas light uh, manufactured by Blacher, and you'll realise that, uh, yeah, uh, anything you can do couldn't actually be any worse in terms of just wires stuffed into lots and lots of turner block. It's just what the Christmas lights look like. So let's uh, go inside and uh, I'm going to make that little modification for the junction box down here. I should mention uh, I've deliberately left a, a hole in the bottom of this junction box because I've found that waterproof boxes, um, if you make them too waterproof, that's when you have problems because water always finds its way in and if it can't find its way out easily that's when stuff will blow up. I've always found that uh, putting a small drainage hole in waterproof uh, boxes is, is always a good idea. So now uh, I'm going to go and make that little connector that's going to reduce the intensity of these blue LEDs a bit. So uh, let's go to the workbench. So I've made my little adapters and I've made one that's going to reduce the current of the blue LEDs from 4 milliamps to 2 milliamps and one that reduces it to just 1 milliamp and I'm going to try them afterwards. And these just go in line with the existing power supply and add a little bit of extra resistance. It's very low power. And I'll let you guys decide which you think looks best, and whichever you guys uh, decide looks best, and just leave a note in the comments below, uh, that's what I'll actually end up choosing. Now, it's worth mentioning, I did the single outline of the LED tube line. Normally in municipal lights, we, we use a double outline. The reason for the double outline is for two things. It increases the brightness a bit, and it also means that uh, if you go around the outline once, and then again with uh, even the same section of tube line, then if a meter goes out, because generally speaking when tube light fails, just one, one meter section goes out unless it fails catastrophic, in which case the whole lot goes out, it usually takes the whole effect out. But if one meter goes out, it means that the chance of that meter being out uh, and eclipsing itself on in a particular effect is fairly low. So although one meter might be out in the effect, the other side is, of the section is still lit, so it's not so visible. It's basically a built-in redundancy. The connectors, uh, let's bring in a little a little picture here. So here's the junction box. It's uh, shown larger than real life. Uh, it's um, very uncluttered inside. It really is, there's not an awful lot in it. In the typical Christmas light and junction boxes, it really is, unless you've got active electronics, it's live, neutral and earth. Sometimes just live and neutral. In this case, I did bring an earth in. It's just in a terminal, just in case I want to add something that requires a ground connection. But the terminals I used to come together, and this is a, a good thing, you know, these days it's so much easier than using terminal block and looping it along. Uh, I used Wago terminals, and these are spring-loaded terminals that you just click the lever back, put a wire in, and then close it on it, uh, and it latches in, makes a good connection. And these common, whatever wires you put in here will all just be common together by a bus bar inside. It's also got a wee uh, recess in here to give you an idea of uh, where what length the cable should be stripped. It's, it's a good system. And they've got a newer version, which is like this. It's much lower profile. Um, and it's also got much easier to lift levers. They're much nicer in the fingers. These ones are quite uh, ferocious in the fingers because they're of a very small pip at the tip. And also they're very heavily spring-loaded. These ones uh, are much nicer to uh, open and close. They're quite easy to lift up and lower down. And also, because it's clear, you can see the wire has gone right into the end properly. It's, it's an interesting development. 
Um, if you want more information on the Wago connectors, just search my videos for the for the word Wago, W-A-G-O, and you'll find a video dedicated to the Wago style connectors. Uh, they're kind of time proven. They're very good. They're a uh, robust connector. So that's the junction box. Ultimately, that is the common connectors. It's got the little power supply inside. If I was adding something like, say, a five volt sort of animated effect, like sort of icicles, I could put a little five volt power supply inside here as well. You know, it's just the box. It's just what you stuff all the electric stuff in fundamentally. So uh, look at another box. I mentioned uh, a Blacher box. Now this is a Blacher. This is in a, a large illuminated sleigh. The illuminated sleigh on George Square, and it had a complete bitch of a fault. Honestly, it was so hard to find because it randomly started tripping the RCD, the RGFCI, the, the Earth Leakage Protection. And unfortunately, this is one of three boxes that were in a really inaccessible position. I had to lie down my side underneath the seat of the sleigh, um, and it was just not pleasant to actually, it was, it was really uncomfortable to work on. And also, trying to narrow down which section, because fundamentally, Every single thing on that sleigh was just in parallel. All the strings, all the tube light, everything was in parallel into these junction boxes. And the biggest junction box had about 12 cables coming into it, and they were just all commoned into just a few bits of terminal block, which meant that, you know, well, you can see that these are just, uh, it was really tricky. You had to twist multiples together and then twist them together. It was not a good arrangement. This is where one of these would have worked or a, or a dedicated marshalling type box. As it transpired, that fault, uh, the way I found it, um, I had to common live and neutral together and then I had to use an insulation tester just on its lowest voltage set and I was concerned about damaging the LED. And I just common live and neutral together and tested it to ground to see what was leaking to ground. And I found, I narrowed it down initially to the, one of the three boxes and then had to find out which wire in that box. And then I disconnected that circuit and because all the wires were just in masses of clumps, I had to power up the effect and just see what didn't light. And it turned out to be a section of the tube light uh, around the sleigh. And the fault was really hard to find. I was expecting where it was where the tube light... Uh, see how it's double outlined down here, by the way? And uh, here. Um, and also it would be double outline, outline at the top, but I've untied it to actually get access to it. But... Um, I thought it would have been down below where it actually went along the ground and laterally, as a precaution, I got the guys to weld on aluminium uh, feet to lift the sleigh off the ground because as it was, the design was terrible. It actually sat physically down the ground um, and those sharp stones were just damaging the tube light. But uh, what it actually transpired, the, the way I found it, it was quite odd. There was actually a big mound of white stuff here and I wish I'd taken a photo before I wiped it off. It turned out that was, I'm guessing, aluminium oxide from the uh, electrolysis, but it depends on, bear in mind that, that this LED tube light has a, it's got a positive bus bar and a negative bus bar, and it was one of the bus bars, and I'm guessing it must have been the positive, because that would make the metal migrate, maybe, uh, towards the negative, not sure. Electron flows from negative to positive, contrary to conventional theory. Um, but it created this big mound of sort of white, fluffy stuff. And when I wiped that off, it was clearly there was a, a pinhole that was quite burnt. And to fix that, I had to just clean that out and then stick some tape around it. And that was the problem solved. I also uh, used some cable ties to space it away from the metalwork. Uh, other interesting things. Uh, I mentioned uh, we put a lot of lights in the George Square Christmas tree. Uh, by a lot of lights, I mean, we actually, this is a, one of my co-workers, Stevie, and uh, we uh, literally had to use wheelbarrows to cart the lights about, because at the peak on George Square, the, we used to put 10,000 LEDs on the George Square Christmas tree. We used to absolutely obliterate it. Um, I noticed the company doing it now. It makes, I'd say the way they're doing it is more efficient. It's all vertical lines up the tree. Um, that's how we kind of started, but then we used a lot more lights horizontally just to actually break the symmetry. And their, pro, their method is optimised for speed of installation and removal. Ours was just, we, we chose to spend, although it went up and we put the lights on, it took two of us about half a day to put the lights on the tree uh, with a cherry picker either side. Taking them down was always a nightmare, lots of untangling, but uh, so that's where the just the vertical lines is going to be easier. But uh, we just obliterated the tree deliberately. We just absolutely peppered it with lights because that was the just it made it looked fantastic. If you look on George Square on the internet on Google for images of George Square Christmas tree, you'll see 
just how much we obliterated that with lights. Uh, it's a good effect. But now, I think it's time to test these, and as I say, I'm going to let you guys choose. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what current it is at each time. Uh, so it's going to be 4 milliamps, 2 milliamps, and 1 milliamp. So let's go and do that test. So this is the LEDs running at 4 milliamps. The blue LEDs are running at 4 milliamps. Now the LEDs are running at 2 milliamps. The LEDs, the blue ones, are running at 2 milliamps. And now the blue LEDs are running at just 1 milliamp. That's 1 milliamp through the blue LEDs. So what do you reckon then? I'm thinking even at the lowest setting, the blues still look quite strong, although having said that, uh, the camera is accentuating the blue a little bit, but uh, it could actually go down even more, and that suggests that even running the blue LEDs at a fraction of a milliamp is going to be ample just to create the effect of that slight cascade in the back. Another advantage of running the LEDs at such a low level is that, of course, they're going to last for ages. Well, if they were waterproof, uh, that remains to be seen. So, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I may end up making another adapter and reducing it still, but uh, you guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below of which intensity you thought uh, provided the best contrast.